friends, welcome back to my channel, Planty Princess 92. My name is Ashley. Today I wanted to talk about the Philanopsis orchid, also commonly known as the moth orchid. I wanted to give you a little history behind this plant, as well as show you what to do after your orchid is finished in bloom. So I have two flower spikes here. One, if you can't tell from how far away the plant it currently is, is completely dead, ready to be all the way removed. And the one is still active, but there's a part of it that is already finished blooming. We'll get into all that in a moment here, but let me give you a little bit of background information on this particular plant. There are currently about 70 plus species in the family or Orchidaceae, if that's how you pronounce it. And the first account of a member in this family was first found in 1750 by Rufius. The Philanopsis orchid was formally established in 1825 by Dr. Carl Ludwig Bloom. That is why sometimes we may come across this particular species or genus and it will be called Philanopsis Bloom, B-L-U-M-E, because that is who formally established the species of this plant. It was then introduced into English cultivation in 1833. Now Bloom derived the name Philanopsis from an ancient Greek word, Philena, meaning moth, and opsis, meaning to have the appearance of or like due to the flowers resembling the white moths found in tropical jungles. I always thought that was really interesting because the flowers to this plant are really unique. They're so beautiful and to be honest, there are just so many different colors. There's so many different forms of the flower in this family and they are all just absolutely stunning. Orchids in this genus are monopodial epiphytes or lithophytes. Monopodial means that they have an upward growth habit coming from one single point which is as you see here how the leaves they grow upward and they come kind of from the center or the crown of the orchid and that's the only growth point they have on i guess their body we could say also most of us are familiar with the word epiphyte meaning that it grows on another plant and gets its nutrients and its water from or its moisture from the surrounding air and doesn't actually feed off of the plant it grows on and lithophyte means that it grows in or on a rock so that's just kind of the difference um, and we're not talking about right now the philanopsis orchid in general we're talking about orchids that are in the family orchidaceae so that's just a little background history kind of on this plant now philanopsis orchids are native to India, Taiwan, China, Southeast Asia, New Guinea, and Australia. And then also there's a lot and the most diversity of this plant being found in Indonesia and the Philippines. It was previously believed that flowering was triggered by nighttime temperatures dropping five to six degrees and then daytime temperatures dropping below 29 degrees Celsius or 84 degrees Fahrenheit. This happens over two to four weeks consecutively, but it was then found that this was actually a myth. Using two clones of the Philanopsis orchid, it was proven to be false. And rather, lower daytime temperatures influence flowering with no signs of nighttime temperatures seem or appear to affect the blooming of the orchid. So now that we have some of that history out of the way, let's talk about the flowering of this plant. So the way this plant flowers is they send up stalks, which are these here, this one, I took it to my mother's and left it on the table and the kitty cat broke it but luckily it's all finished blooming, so I'm going to chop it off anyways, or I would be so upset. So anyways, there's two stalks that are currently coming out of my plant here, where these kind of sheathy things are. They're kind of like tan. Those are the nodes on the stalk, and that's where either the blooms come out of, or as you see how I cut mine down there, that's where the next active uh, flower stalk will come out of. So these stalks will flower in that sense they will kind of 
push a little stalk out of one of those nodes and then blooms will then come off of that stalk. Now I've got my orchid to flower twice. So this will be the second time that I am cutting down the stem. The stem is completely dead so I am going to remove it completely from the base but this one is still alive and well so what I'm going to do is if you see here how I chopped it right, right uh, above that first active node prior to you know the first bloom or or following the first set of blooms since i've had this plant but now this node is no longer active so this one i am going to chop down here because now this is now the first active node and i'm going to cut it right above that as you see the same way it did here eventually when it is ready to bloom it will then push out another stem from that node and that's where the flowers will come off of. This one I'm going to cut as close to the base as I can because as you see, it's yellowed, it's no longer healthy. Also, I'm going to remove this leaf here, which I can probably just pull right off. And right by that leaf, there's a bunch of really healthy new roots kind of growing in there. So it is definitely getting ready to kind of Go a little dormant, regain some of that energy, cutting this now because it's spring I think is the best time to do this if your plant is done blooming because it's now in the growing season. It will have time, enough time to kind of absorb as much energy as possible, get ready for those next rounds of beautiful blooms. So we're going to go ahead and I'm going to show you how I cut this here. I'm going to go with sterilized shears that I sterilized with alcohol. I'm going to go literally right below or right above the base, as close to the base as I can without cutting the base or any of the roots. And I'm just going to cut that one off. Now, as for this one, like I said, I'm just gonna check out some of these nodes really quickly. So this one seems to be still very, very healthy. I'm going to go ahead and mm, I actually might take it a node lower only because then the, you know, this look, how you can see it kind of coming out of the stem, it will be less noticeable if I take it and cut it from here because the leaf is kind of hiding it. So then it will look more like one flower stalk rather than have that, you know, um chopped look to it so i'm gonna go about a quarter inch above that last active node and just chop that off this will then heal over and when it's time a little a little growth point will form out of this node and um, instead of being flowers it will be another flower stalk and so on so on the blooms will be on their way. So now let me just show you some of the nice new roots that this plant is getting. I have to repot this, so I'm just gonna kind of loosen it up out of here so I can show you what's going on underneath. So my plant also, this is definitely a good time to take off any old roots, decaying roots, rotted roots, or roots that are no longer functioning for the plant. Um, it is showing signs of a lot of new roots growing in, which you can see all right here. There's a bunch of them. So now is definitely the time to get some of these old roots off. Now, orchid roots should be very firm, very fleshy, very kind of like hard. And if they're soft and mushy, then they're definitely, they're done, which a lot of these are. Now, unfortunately, I have a lot of new growth also like off of these roots, but I'm just gonna chop them because although they're all still hard, they're coming to points where they're getting really thin, if you can see that, like here and here, and it almost looks like they are about to like, you know, come off. So I'm just going to cut off anything that I don't think is useful for this orchid anymore because now's the perfect time where it has plenty of time to kind of rejuvenate and get itself back on its feet so that's gone this at the base here 
I think pretty much all these are all these are done. So I am left with the two original roots. Let me just cut these old, literally dried out roots off. Okay, so I'm left with these two main roots that they had. And then this one does have a couple two feeders coming off of it. But then I have all these new, nice, rejuvenated, healthy new roots coming in. So this plant will be just perfect. So now I do have this one flower stalk left. It will definitely push out another flower stalk at some point when it is ready to start going into bloom. Um... I've never had a kiki or kiki, uh, which is what a orchid pup, I guess, is called. Uh, they do kind of, I, I think they come off of the flower stalks. So rather than either a flower coming out of the node or another flower stalk coming out of the node, if you chopped it just like I did here, the kiki will come out of the node, which is really neat and interesting. Um... I know there's like this hormone or, or something like that to kind of promote or a paste, I think it is, a cakey paste that promotes cakeys or kikis uh, to grow. I've never tried it. I never used it. I've been thinking about getting some because I necessarily don't want it to like get another orchid. I really like the look of the baby orchid kind of just hanging on its mother. I think it looks so gorgeous. So I just thought that would be really neat. Now, before we finish up, I'm just going to briefly tell you how I care for my orchid. As you see, I keep it in pure orchid bark, and I do keep it in a completely clear pot. This is good for orchids because, like I mentioned earlier, they're epiphytes or lithophytes, and they their roots are always exposed to the sun, to the air, so having them, one, in something that's opaque, and not translucent will keep the medium more moist. It will prevent less air flow to the roots because of the medium being more moist. It will also prevent less light or really any light getting to the roots, which is what this plant is used to in its native environment. So I definitely do like to keep this in something translucent, something clear, that way light is able to get to the roots. Also, uh, that has holes in the pot so the medium's able to dry out pretty quickly. I water my orchid maybe about once a week and I don't necessarily drench the soil. And I do that for a lot of my plants that I water from the top. I water a lot from the bottom, but the ones I water from the top, I find giving a light watering more often is better for me than drenching them less often because it's prevented root rot on a lot of my plants that I was having trouble with in the past. So I like to give this a little light watering more frequently, probably once a week. And then you always just want to make sure that, because especially pots like this, where the bottom is kind of sat up more than the actual bottom edge of the pot, some water tends to kind of sit in there. I always make sure I kind of hold the plant in and completely dump it upside down to just kind of get rid of any of that excess water that's chilling at the bottom of the pot because this plant is used to, you know, being completely aired out. That excess water will quickly, quickly rot these roots. Also, this plant is sitting in my sunroom that has two east facing windows, a south facing window and a north facing window. So it's a very bright lit room, very indirect bright light that it gets pretty much all day long and it has been growing so well for me. The orchid's kind of more like a slow paced grower, but you definitely do notice a lot of nice beautiful growth if given it in the right conditions. Humidity I noticed really doesn't affect my orchid too much. It's probably in 40 to 50% humidity and I do not keep it near a humidifier. I used to mist it every once in a while, but I've quickly discovered that that really didn't change anything because it's more of a slow paced grower. So I mean, maybe it does have a little effect, but it grows so slow anyways that I don't really notice the effect. So I just leave it be. I kind of just leave it chilling on its own and it is quite happy. This plant is definitely one of my favorite flowering plants and I love the way the flowers are so unique. I love the foliage, especially when they get kind of like twisty like this one is here. It's just so gorgeous. 
It really is a gorgeous and easy care plant. Also, I just really wanted to quick add that a lot of people say to water your orchids with ice. I tried it, but I just don't, I don't see the point in it. And again, it kind of coincides with just giving your plant that light watering. I think the coldness from the ice cube isn't good for the roots. I know a lot of plants don't like cold water. So to me, watering with ice cubes, for some that may work, uh, for some it may not. I personally don't like it and wouldn't recommend it because I just like to give a light watering more often than not. So I just wanted to mention that really quick before we wrap this video up. I hope you found a lot of useful information on the Philanopsis orchid and learned what to do when your orchid is done blooming and how to encourage more blooms to grow from your orchid. Thank you again for joining me in another video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe if you're interested in the content I provide. And as always, every plant's a princess.